Uh, now, the next thing, uh, which I hope I can find and should have found already. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Okay, let's see. Where am I and who am I and what am I doing? That's the myopic question, you know. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Okay, talks for astrology. That looks pretty good. And that looks really fat. All right. Now, I will try to get through nine initiations in a short time. Won't we all? Uh, really, I, I won't take it that far. But you can have the document. And frankly, I'm doing a bit of speculating when we get to initiation eight and nine. Up to then, I know what I'm talking about. OK. <laughs> all right, so uh, that's the whole thing. Uh, DK emphasizes it, that every disciple, every true disciple, every real disciple is the true disciple, is in preparation for initiation. So don't forget it. It, it means if you're a real disciple, and not just an aspirant who's kind of interested in these things, and aren't they, you know, but I live my life, but they're kind of interesting. You know, if you're a real disciple, you're on the road. Initiation can only be taken when the astrological indicators are appropriate. The, the, the Buddha even had to wait one whole chain before he could take the third initiation on the moon chain because it, it couldn't be offered at that time. He had to wait till he got to the earth chain. So you've got to be patient. It might be that you are, you are of the quality that is essentially the initiate, and yet the astrological moment is not right. Patience. Patience. <laughs> okay. And we really don't know these astrological indicators. But DK gives a couple of hints. He says, uh, I would point out that when the sun and the moon hiding a planet, we can discuss that, and Saturn are all combined in a certain house in the horoscope, you have what is called the sign of the man who is to take initiation. 298, and that's certainly one of those uh, kind of fluid areas. Uh, we're not certain, but we can imagine Saturn is so important in initiation. and. And Vulcan is very close to the sun, so we have to decide what that other planet really is. Or uh, is this combination to be found in the natal chart or maybe in the progress chart or the directed chart? You know, in other words, it may not have to be right there in your natal chart, but it can kind of come together uh, through progressions, and that might be the moment. Further, one must know oneself. Uh, this is where your own knowledge of yourself comes in. You have to know yourself to be reasonably within the range of a certain initiation. Uh, and through the study, study of the initiation in question, and through the study of yourself, if those qualities of initiation that have to be done, are, if, if you're nowhere near them, then you just can't say, oh, well, the chart says I am. You have to know yourself well enough. The chart alone cannot indicate the possibility of initiation if it is not within sight, uh, within a couple of... Uh, I, I want to say incarnations, I would say, not initiations. Yeah, OK. So certain signs are most focally in the literature associated with certain initiations. But you know, I'm kind of out to prove or suggest that you can use any sign to bring in an achievement that is needed for any initiation. Things keep changing, and you can use them in respect to the goal towards which you are moving. Uh, so with some of these, we may be familiar. For instance, uh, Leo is so much associated with the first initiation, but so are so many other signs. You know, D D uh, DK keeps on emphasizing Leo. Um, so uh, that's something to bear in mind, either your rising sign or your sun sign. Scorpio is uh, uh, mythologically most associated with the second initiation, but of course, the first three initiations are all scorpionic. You know, we have to talk about that. Capricorn, the mountaintop, most associated with the third initiation, but five initiations are directly associated with Capricorn. So, you know, if you have the patience or the stamina, I've done this bit on uh, uh, webinar commentaries on the egoic lotus. So I take all the different. Um, petals of the lotus and all the different tiers and all the different rays, and I talk about all of these things in relation to the stage of evolution through which you may be passing. 
it would be a long study, and you'd have to get, you know, used to the commentary style. But there's a lot of information in there which you might find useful. Maybe someday someone will help me organize what is uh, not my strong point, uh, what is on the uh, commentary. Because I get into, you know, li literally everything I could think of. Um, and of course, some, some of you have studied the initiations even more than I have, and are, you know, maybe even much closer to decay in how you represent them. <laughs> All right. I will offer some thoughts now on the various signs and how and why they must be related to the various initiations. Most of us are applicants to the first or second initiation. That's just a fact. DK had um, 50 or so students that he wrote letters to, and uh, you know, masters don't normally do that in such detail. And they were, uh, the majority of them, all except one, had taken the first initiation. And uh, not all of them were near the second, but they were approaching that, and some of them were definitely being prepared for the second, and maybe a few had gone beyond. But the, you know, in the bell-shaped curve, the big bump was uh, between the first and second initiation, with some towards the second and the third an occasional uh, possibility. So look, you know, the old saying in the Seminary Institute, when you hear hoofbeats, you think of horses first, not wildebeests, okay? So, <laughs> the, the, the idea here is that if it was good enough for them and they were chosen by DK to be in his groups, then it's probably applicable to us too. So we don't want to exaggerate anything. We have this uh, joke that, you know, when someone says their initi initiatory status, always subtract one. And if you're really wise, subtract two. All right. Where does that leave us? All right. <laughs> in any case, we will, uh, we will find... Um, in the astrological chart, the indications will mostly apply for us to the first or second initiation, even though it may be a little bit ahead. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a big thing to enter, enter consciously the fifth kingdom as a, an initiate of the first degree. It's a big thing. Entering the hall of wisdom, the seventh petal is beginning to unfold, the fifth petal is completely unfolded. This is no small thing even though we might write it off as, oh, I've been there, done that. Even such a thought denies, because the Christ retakes the first initiation with every candidate he initiates. So always think of that. The Christ retakes, how he does this, who knows? He retakes the first initiation with every candidate before him. Okay. So there's probably a way in which all signs can be implicated in every initiation, um, and you know I'll, I'll make some suggestions. So we will uh, review some of the signs, most focal of the various uh, initiations. Signs or combinations of signs and planetary positions may indicate the possibility of initiation or the taking of certain stages involved in preparation for an initiation for those who are within range. So, you know, DK doesn't only deal with the initiations. He gives you six formulas in the book Discipleship in the New Age, which uh, deal with the interim period between initiations, and they are profound. Jeff, he's done a lot of work with that. I mean, all of us, you know, all of us who have gone into the advanced teachings, they are profound, those formulas. And they're just about the, the mid, you know, the midway point, the, 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 the interim between the initiations. They are preparation. And boy, do they demand something of us, okay. So, um, I will uh, offer below a list of signs and a certain way, and a, the way certain of them may contribute to the taking of initiation. I probably won't fill them all in, <laughs> as I don't know enough to do that. Well, actually, I stayed up very last, late last night and I filled them all in. <laughs> but I wouldn't look at them as a gospel. You know, anyway, it's kind of fun, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning. Now, the ninth initiation, let's see, what happens when you're a Gemini? Okay. Well, you live in two worlds, all right. No, you refuse one of them. Whatever. Anyway, we now come... <laughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> My wife says, don't cough into the microphone. All right. First initiation. This is relevant. This is relevant to us. The birth of Bethlehem, uh, the energy of love enters the etheric body. So here we go. 
if Aries is prominent, you know, this is how we think. Aries sun, Aries rising sign. These are some thoughts to say, how can uh, this, this sign be used? Wherever it is in your chart, if I'm preparing for the first initiation. So Aries, it is, after all, the first initiation, which is initiation into the first stages of the kingdom of God, the fifth kingdom. So every time Aries is the sign of initiation, you're entering something new, you push in, whichever it may be, and you're entering a new kingdom, that's Aries. Taurus, the gross physical appetites centering around the sacral center are largely overcome, actually I'm kind of playing it down, which is more or less so it's completely overcome, are largely overcome. The energies of the sacral center is raving in the throat, in the in many ways. The voice of the soul is heard as the voice of conscience. So we tackle uh, our vices, most of which uh, we're considering at this point to be physical, though there can be other vices, and we get them in order. Taurus. You know, in the labors of Hercules, Taurus is the big sign in which you conquer the sexual appetites, and you ride the one-eyed bull to the island, or, or the, you know, ride the white bull to the island of the one-eyed men. That's the only way you're going to do it, because unless that energy is controlled, the inner eye will not open. That's something for everybody to think about. Gemini. Uh, now, he really makes a big deal of this. The etheric body receives light and love of the soul. Intelligent creativity in the throat center is stimulated. And this is his statement. The secret of Gemini has to be grasped at the first initiation because it is the mystery of the relation of the father, mother, and child. Sounds a lot like Virgo, doesn't it? The, the birth of the Christ child upon the physical plane is the consummating glory of the Gemini force. Uh, you know, you don't think about the fact that Gemini doesn't have seventh ray, like Nicholas has pointed out, it's those two pillars that really connect heaven and earth. So it, it really upholds the temple. And you have to go through that. And it does help to ground the mysteries right on the physical plane, uh, as masonry will one day be grounded, ruled by Gemini. So there's a lot of, you know, we could, we could just sit here and we could talk about Gemini for the next hour. All right, <clears throat> Cancer is a major third ray constellation. The personality is integrated under the third ray, just prior to the first initiation. It may be the life in which you're taking, or it may be just before, but the third ray becomes really important at the first initiation. And uh, so there's integration of the personality to a reasonable degree, and it becomes receptive to the Leonian soul, Cancer and Leo fit together. They are a unit, and certain systems begin with Cancer and Leo as the center of the whole thing. So you've got to get those two signs together. One is soul, one is the elemental life. So uh, the fourfold elemental nature begins to be subjected to the will of the soul. Vulcan hammers in, and receptive Cancer has to obey. Spiritual instinct is the guide, and the moon reflects the sun. So, you know, you can pull yourself together to a degree of integration, master your elemental life to a certain, and, and, and turn it upward toward the light of the soul in Leo, first initiation. Leo, I, I highlight it. That's the main sign. He most associates it with first, uh, first degree. The heart center is stimulated. Well, it's also stimulated the fourth degree, but he says the heart center is really stimulated, the birth of the Christ in the heart. Uh, the light of the soul is experienced, entry into the fifth kingdom, fifth sign, Leo fifth sign, fifth kingdom of nature through this fifth sign. So, uh, but you know, Leo is involved in all these initiations, but still he really gives it a prominent place. You're entering the kingdom of light, the kingdom of love, the kingdom of your real uh, higher self. And Leo is the doorway into that. You don't want to stay, hang out with the moon forever, you know, and that's why the transition has to be made from Cancer to Leo. Virgo, extensive physical purification, very necessary. Through Vulcan, the esoteric ruler leads to initiation. This is the great mother constellation, and the first initiation is birth into the fifth kingdom, and the long gestation period that occurs as you are preparing for that emergence, which really takes place in Capricorn. Now remember, this is relevant to all of us. 
I've seen that people take initiations, but they still have a little bit left in the complete fulfillment of the curriculum of that initiation. You know what I mean? So we haven't like done it all perfect, go to the next one, done it all perfect. There's an overlap going on here. So all these things are necessary for us to bear in mind, even if we, though we think we've taken the birth of the Christ in the heart. Libra, the sacral center. Okay, and ruled by Uranus, you know, we'll get into that. Is stimulated and the energy is raised to the throat. It's a big third ray constellation. The soul and personality begin the first phases of the destined marriage in the heavens. Uh, the first consummation is at the third initiation. Soul and personality really come together in that, what do they call it? Someone who knows Carl Jung, Hirogamas or something. It's the union of soul and personality. It's the marriage. But it begins here. And until, you know, you know how Libra is, un, un bridled sexual passion or something like that, that has to be raised to the creative throat. That's a requirement in the first initiation. So, you know, um, sometimes, it, you know, it goes beyond that and uh, it's not all wrapped up. Scorpio, really important at three initiations. The struggle to overcome the physical appetites and their conquest, I add, in a human way, to a reasonable degree. Uh, Sex, money, and comfort greatly reduced as obstructive influences. So the physical appetites are attacked here. You know, you, you, you are the conqueror, and you lift the hydra that much that you're no longer ensnared in sex, money, and comfort. Sagittarius, he gives it for the first two initiations especially. The true path of discipleship is trodden. A vision of the soul um, produces incentive. One treads the straight, it actually means narrow, you know, actually the word straight is not just straight, it means really narrow, uh, the straight and narrow path with one pointed focus. One is becoming a real disciple. You can tie this up with the sixth initiation too. I mean, these different signs have different places, but it's really important to be a true, fierily aspiring individual in order to take uh, this initiation. Capricorn. Well, this is the actual sign of the birth in Bethlehem. The unicorn begins to overcome the king of beasts. We are both the unicorn and we are the king of beasts. Personality. The voice of conscience regulates the physical plane life. The outer life is subjected to strict control. Okay, so you, you're born in, you know, it's Christmas. The babe is born in the manger. The manger is pretty, pretty much the elemental life that we're the soul is born into. Capricorn is really important at the first initiation and at all five and beyond. Aquarius, not usually associated. The first phases of group consciousness are experienced. The man becomes decentralized physically. His physical nature is washed in the waters of purification. You know, in the, in the labors of Hercules, he goes into the stable and w with these rivers, he cleans out three levels of accumulated cow Poo. Okay, so the waters of purification, the eleventh labor, and and finally, you know, you are a uh, what can I say? In group consciousness, the soul. You begin to be related in love and in soul to other people. That's the beginning, first initiation. Pisces, this is a big one. Right before much grief, <laughs> much grief, and relinquishment precede the first initiation. An initial though major detachment is accomplished. The Christ, whose major sign is Pisces, not the Aquarian Christ, but the cosmic decanate that's associated with the Christ is Pisces. So this is the cosmic decanate in some much larger being. Um, the Christ is met, okay. The sign prominent in the transfer from the common cross to the fixed cross is Pisces. And that's what you're doing. When you go into the kingdom of God, you are entering the... Uh, you are entering the Hall of Wisdom at the first initiation. You're entering the fixed cross, off the mutable cross. A lot of us are mixtures, you know what I mean? We're still carrying fixed, uh, mutable cross tendencies and trying to do fixed cross things. Well, and even once you're a first degree initiate or whatever, you still have those things. But technically, you're entering the cross of blinding light, fiery pain, bitter woe, sounds like fun, right? And yet the cross of liberation. So every one of the fixed signs 
is given to you in that little fourfold statement. And Pisces is what detaches you so you can get off uh, that mutable cross and really get nailed onto the cross of discipleship, which opens the heart and makes, listen, I mean, wh why aren't there more disciples? You know, I mean, we, we offer such a wonderful incentive, you know, just, uh, all right. <coughs> well, after a while, you get tired of elemental living. There surely must be more, you know what I mean? So when you're really sick and tired and Pluto has done its work with you, you're ready for the fixed cross. All right, so that's the first initiation. All right, how long am I allowed? All right, I don't think I'm getting to initiation nine. I really don't think so. As immediately relevant as it may be to a select few here. All right. Second initiation. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, DK says many, many will take the first initiation in the coming Aquarian age, and some, what does he say, some thousands will take the second. Now, we don't know the numbers, and he's being deliberately vague, but obviously this is a pretty high standard because all those lives pass between the first and second initiation. He does give you a little bit of leeway. He does tell you, well, will it be in the next life or the one after? Somewhere in initiation, human and solar, he doesn't describe that long period of lives between the first and second where most of us find ourselves. He actually gives you an incentive, do it right, a couple of lives may do. Otherwise, it might be 20 lives, it might be 30 lives. I mean, he gives us the analogy of the life of Jesus. He's born, and then he's baptized at the age of 30. Well, you know, do those years count? Do they indicate how long it takes? Someone who thinks he knows told me, well, it takes at least seven lives. Well, it might take a lot longer than that. So I think the time equation is often in our hands. We don't realize that, and we let, we let time fly. But Master Mori has said, <laughs> I love this quote, if you uh, waste your own time, it's suicide. And if you waste someone else's time, it's murder. Now, that tends to impress your thought, you know. <laughs> think twice. All right, Aries for the second initiation. Fiery aspiration replaces desire for more material pursuits. So you know how really uh, ardent uh, uh, second degree applicants can be? They've, they're really on the sixth ray. It's the, it's the sixth ray initiation and they've got to overcome the kind of idealism that sacrifices everything for the goal they think they see. And we see a lot of that fanaticism going on, but at least you need the fire to burn away the dross in the astral body. Taurus, and this is an important one, really an important one for the second degree, the light of the soul <coughs> dispels glamour. The secret of Taurus, says the Tibetan, is revealed at the second initiation by the sudden removal or disappearance of world glamour in the blinding energy of light. It sounds marvelous, but of course we realize that some people who, you know, take, they haven't gotten rid of all their glamours, but a lot. A lot is, uh, is where the light is, the dark cannot be. Uh, this constitutes the final radiant activity which consummates the play of the Taurian force upon humanity during the long and cyclic journey to which man is committed. The individual enacts on a tiny scale what humanity as a whole will enact when it takes initiation in Taurus. And uh, that's the slow way, of course. Everybody rises. If you don't want to make extra effort, it's the slow way. It's okay. It's okay, but I don't think there's anybody in this room that is accepting the slow way. Why? Because you're more useful if you can get there and help. Otherwise, you just become part of the mass that, you know, is slowly elevated. At the second initiation, you have to have the illumined mind, and Taurus will certainly help to, to give that. So it's a big sign for getting rid of glamour, and a lot of glamours have to be cleared before the second initiation is possible. We're going to talk about, you know, Glamour, a new Glamour initiative. Um, Livy and, and Tui and I and whoever else wants to help, we're kind of spearheading this thing because the world has, would you say, a little bit of Glamour at the moment. <laughs> and it's uh, causing uh, some dangers, you know, to sane um, relations between human beings. So we got to do something. Everybody has to do something. Okay, Gemini's second initiation. 
the astral buddhic connection is achieved. An illumined mind and spiritual intelligence. Gemini is so much involved in those two acquisitions. Of course, I'm leaving many things out. You know, this is just an encapsulation. We wanted to meditate on this. We'd have a long list. So this describes the consciousness of the second degree disciple, an illumined mind and spiritual intelligence. The Antikarana, much ruled by Gemini, is now being built in earnest. When you reach... Uh, the second degree, thereabouts, you can really start to build the Antikarana in an intelligent way. And be, before that, you know, uh, it's contact with the soul, uh, the, the higher self, which has to be the preparation for that, because you need soul infusion in your mental unit in order to really build the Antikarana. So um, Gemini is the, it's all Antikaranas. You know, it just is the link between this and that and this and that, on and on and on until you reach the point. Okay, cancer, second initiation. And you know, we'll get into the planets later. The astral seas are calmed and emotional reaction is subdued. You know, as long as we have these violent emotional reactions whereby we cannot think clearly with spiritual intelligence and illumined mind, we just can't take the second degree. Of course, every, every different ray type has a different way of approaching the initiations. And that's like a, a whole thing we could do. You know, DK somehow emphasizes, obviously, the second ray and some other things, sixth ray. But every ray type has its particular approach. He tells us, OK, take the second degree. You third and fifth ray types will take it easier, because you're not living so much in your emotions. Every once in a while, he drops a little hint here and there how to do it. But the systematic approach of how every ray type approaches a particular initiation would be fantastic study. And we have to kind of put that together, you know, speculation, and maybe he will offer more. Uh, Leo, important. All the, the heart of the sun influences the astral body. The solar plexus energy is raised to the heart. Sirius, Leo, Jupiter. That's one of those great uh, connections. Um, and Jupiter is one of those planets involved in this uh, initiation, as it will be described. Um, what is the heart of the sun? Well, the heart of the sun, you know, <laughs> there's the subjective sun, is it an etheric position? Is it found on the cosmic astral plane? Is it the soul nature of the solar logos? In a way, it's all those things. So you, oftentimes, I think he means the soul of the solar logos, and all the way it makes its way down into our heart center, our egoic lotus, our heart center, and so forth. But anyway, the heart of the sun gets involved, and people really go through an emotional loving purification, you know, with this second degree and Leo. Virgo, more purification. The emotions are purified, especially with the help of the developing acute mind. And remember, Virgo is a very second ray sign and a six ray sign, and second ray and six ray are so involved in the second initiation. Libra, the pairs of opposites, that is, what are they? Soul influence and personality influence, they're vertical opposites, usually. There's also these, one not better than another, you know, but, and I talked about that a few years ago, you know, we have the, the pairs of opposites that are not vertical, but they have to do with extremes on the same level and a balance, and then the pairs of opposites that are vertical. And mostly, DK deals, deals with those. He talks about Libra, a fluctuating point of light between a higher and a lower till it reaches the central point. So Libra, um, the pairs of opposites are balanced on the astral plane. Personality desire, soul desire, they reach kind of a uh, equilibrium. A necessary emotional balance or tranquilization is achieved. Um, I, once, I, I once asked Nicholas, why is um, Libra such a peaceful sign? And I think you said because of the, what do you say? Because the spear of the centaur and the tail of the scorpion are both aiming towards it. So in other words, if you're Libra, all this stuff about peace may not make very much sense. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. Ah, uh, yeah. <coughs> right. <coughs> Scorpio. In bold. This is the sign most associated with the second initiation. The emotional heads of the Hydra, fear, hatred, selfish ambition, you know, everybody and humanity. 
are to a sufficient extent overcome. Light is shed upon the emotional nature, clarifying and dissipating many glamours. A higher function of the Mercurian mind is turned upon the clarification of the astral body. He deals with the importance of Mercury in Scorpio, and Mercury is the hierarchical ruler, and he gives two levels at which it works. Well, any good psychologist knows you're going to be working a lot with Mercury in Scorpio when you're trying to straighten out all the complexes that people have, you know. So um, this is a real victory, and uh, the swamps of Lerna are maybe, you know, there's two, there's two big places where Hercules is really famous. He kills the Nemean lion, uh, where we could apply that king of beasts, you know, first initiation and beyond, and, this, and he kills the nine-headed hydra. I don't know if he waits the next initiation to lop off the next three heads. Anyway, he has to lift it up. And uh, the swamps of Lerna are scorpionic. Um, there are higher and more cruel heads of the hydra. And that's more a mental thing, and Scorpio's involved there too. Okay, Sagittarius. It's a big second degree sign. Desire is transformed into really fiery aspiration, but, not, uh, but you give up fanaticism and keep your fiery aspiration. Now, how is that done? You know, everybody has to find out for themselves. <sighs> Just ask me. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the one-pointed disciple directing the stream of desire towards higher visions and higher objectives. You know, you may fall off the path for a little bit, but that soul vision is absolutely planted in your mind, and you will not deviate. And you'll get there as a result. You know, traveling fast on the plains of life, on your ever whiter horse, as it were. You know, it's uh, your purified horse, which will become the unicorn, of course. So that's just the symbolism, and that's how it goes. The Kalki avatar and all that, he's coming on the horse. So, you know, if, whatever your signs are, you know, kind of think about your life. Kind of apply this to yourself. Kind of. Think about, what am I aiming for, and uh, how can I use this? Capricorn. This is interesting. It's usually the, the goat with the tail of a fish, the real ancient symbol of Capricorn, and he's called the one who crosses the water. Emotional detachment is achieved, and more mental focus. The one who crosses the water of the astral plane safely keeps his head above the water and is able to turn into the unicorn. Now, that can apply way, way up on the cosmic astral plane, too. You know, these symbols are not just for such as we are. Um, if you really think about what a constellation of the zodiac is and who it can affect, think of it. In this one about whom naught may be said, who is our super cosmic logos, const constellations are chakras. Not just solar system, constellations are chakras. And where are these constellations found? They're found in the heart, in the head, center of the one about whom not may be said. They're very powerful. So you've got, you know, you've got one major center in your etheric body, and it's got 12 petals. And in a way, each one of those 12 petals is a huge directing agent of all kinds of stuff that goes below. Well, think of the big being. The constellations are right up there, directing many lower faculties. So. Can the constellations be involved in the initiation of planetary logoi, solar logoi, even cosmic logoi, which are just chakras in the one about whom not may be said? Yes, the constellations are very powerful, and they have a very high place in this great being. So you cross the water. The one who crosses the water, interesting that the dolphin is the ruler of the second decanate of uh, Capricorn, Aquarius. The astral nature is washed in the waters of purification, the second part of the 11th labor of Hercules. It's very interesting about Aquarius. It sounds like water. It's an air sign. But it's associated with both air and water. And really, when you look at the new medicine and the new vibrational medicine connected with Aquarius, it's all about the purification uh, of water, matter. Water and matter are the same thing in occultism. So these. Purifying energies flow through us all, cleansing everything, if we don't screw things up so much that we manage to have global epidemics, because Aquarius will carry them too.
Everybody shares. The ancient law of evil sharing, as is called in esoteric healing. Replaced by the new law of ancient dominating good. But at first, the ancient law of evil sharing. You know, what goes around comes around. You breathe. Everybody's breathing, you know. Oh, by the way, two is going to come in here and talk about your health. You know what I mean? How to avoid getting the plague this time. Okay. <laughs> I'm not helping. I'm, you know, okay. But I'm, I'm you know, <laughs> doing what I can. <coughs> I'm coughing inwardly. All right. Pisces. Second initiation. The unselfish love nature, profoundly stimulated, entering the stream. That's what it's called. Entering the stream. Flow along the stream towards the ashram. The current of the ashram is now carrying you. And you've earned the right to be supported by the ashramic energies. And of course, you go through the necessary detachments that kind of uh, Pisces, in a way, rules the kind of a sixth petal of the egoic lotus where you do a lot of unselfish things, but it's still not quite group conscious. It's the transition there. Okay. All right. I won't ask if there's any questions, but I will ask if there are questions after we finish the third initiation. And then we can all, you know, jump into crucifixion, and that may be it for the morning. All right. Third initiation. Aries. The nature of being is understood. And here's DK's quote, marvelous quote. The secret of Aries is the secret of beginnings, of cycles, and of emerging opportunity. At the third initiation, the initiate begins to understand the life of the spirit, or the highest aspect. Until that time, he has expressed first the life of the form, and then the life of the soul within that form. This experience is of so high a nature that only those who have passed through it could in any way comprehend anything I might say. Um, so it's a, DK tells us in the beginning, who am I? I'm a Tibetan. I am an initiate into the mysteries of being. This should tell you something he says in his extract. So obviously, you know, <laughs> fifth degree, obviously, but it all begins here at the third degree. Uh, that whole encounter with being begins really there in a lead up to it, and then is consummated in isolated unity at the fifth degree. Strong access to the spiritual will, reception of monadic energy, uh, Aries, Pluto, Shambhala. That's a triangle. Monadic energy from there. So it's all about number one. Being is number one. Or is it the zero? But anyway, being is the one thing that really is. And Aries somehow, as the first sign, comes in contact with that. Third initiation, Taurus. Integrated contact with the greatest light of the monad. I see the greatest light. This is an initial impact of Shambhala, much associated with Taurus, as for example at Waisak. The greatest light of Shambhala. Uh, available to us in some measure. It's called unfettered enlightenment. Taurus is light, 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 available to us at Waisak. So, you know, sometimes, what do you say? Shambhala has all the signs, of course. Christ had all the signs. He, he gives you a list of all, everything that Christ did under each sign. He set his face to go to Jerusalem. Sagittarius, you know, he, whatever. You know, it's a, it's a marvelous little section of the book. So Taurus is a lot associated, as far as humanity goes, with Shambhala and its unfettered enlightenment. Gemini, the soul and personality are now integrated into a fluid synthesis. The low goes high, the high goes low, and there's this wonderful interchange in communication between soul and personality, more infallible. Cancer, third initiation, the whole is seen as one. That's what DK says. That's the beginning of isolated unity. The whole is seen as one. Now, all of us should practice that, you know. And we do. We do. Leo, third initiation. The initiate knows the soul and can focus within the causal body. DK said, why aren't you meditating effectively? Because you're not focusing within the causal body. And he states that right away <coughs> in uh, uh, Letters on Occult Meditation. Sets the goal very high. Okay. This fulfills the first advanced injunction. No. Express, reveal, destroy, resurrect. You can begin at the th third initiation with no. You can also begin at the first initiation with no. But resurrect 
fits with the seventh initiation. May, and, and what are you capable of doing now in Leo? You have the third initiation. You're capable of making revelation of the monad, the one. It begins to occur. At the second initiation, you express the monad. At the third initiation, you make revelation of the one. The light of the soul shines forth unobstructedly, unobstructed by the personality, the first stages of isolated unity, which is your true identity, is occurring uh, at this third initiation stage. Virgo, keen mentality is awakened and applied to the overcoming of illusion. You know, Virgo <laughs> is associated with some monadic levels. It's, it's the sign you find on the monadic plane. It's not just all intellect. So there's the second and sixth ray involved in their monadic plane is second and sixth. So, but keen mentality is applied. Virgo and Jupiter rule the monadic plane, which is first contacted at the third initiation, at least in a conscious way. Maybe something, the monad is always present. The DK or someone like that can look at you and tell you what your monad is, even if you're not an initiate. But knowing it in our own uh, consciousness is possible to the third degree. Libra, the marriage in the heavens is consummated. The Asna Center is especially stimulated. The spiritual triad in terms of the higher mind, especially, is contacted. Unification of subject and object through contemplation, third degree. The phase of meditation ruled by Libra, contemplation. When you're contemplating that thing, you, whatever, you're not an object, you're me. See, object and subject are the same in contemplation. And we begin to get that, okay? We have to be objective, truly, but beyond objectivity is shared subjectivity. Contemplation, Libra, third degree. Scorpio still applies. The mental heads of the Hydra are conquered. Pride, separativeness, and cruelty. Scorpio rules illumination in the fivefold stages of initiation. Concentration, Leo. Meditation, Virgo. Contemplation, Libra. Illumination, Scorpio. This is called the great illumination. In many, you know, so many of the old books, they're written all about achieving this third degree. If the master in Zen hits you on the head with his stick, it's all about achieving the third degree. He wouldn't put that in that kind of language. But it, you wake up, awakening, see? Okay, the fourth stage of the meditative process, good. Sagittarius, third degree. This is tough, but I worked around this. A very broad planetary perspective characterizes consciousness. It's called the planetarization of consciousness. Uh, Dane Rudyard, you know, great astrologer. Why isn't he in your groups, DK? Because he's already a world disciple. You know, Sagittarius rising, he achieved something there. He writes a book called Planetarization of Consciousness. Okay, <clears throat> the personality is inspired by the monad. The Antikorana is completed to the monastic permanent atom through successful arrow shooting. What do we call that in the Antikorana process? Projection. Sagittarius across the Gemini Rainbow Bridge, anchored, the arrow is anchored, and you have the monastic permanent atom and the mental unit really connected, and the Antikorana is useful, and the spiritual triad can function with higher mind coming down the Antikorana. Also, Sagittarius, an intuitive sign, one of the intuitive signs. So Jupiter and Buddhi come in. Capricorn, that's the sign for the third degree. The supernal light becomes a reality. <coughs> this is the sign most associated with the third initiation. The sun shines atop the mountain. The secret of the soul is revealed. The secret of the hidden glory. Freedom from the ancient authority of the threefold personality marking a climaxing moment in the history of all initiates. Who's in charge now? You know, three-fifths. You as the soul are in charge. And, and, and you are the authority, and the personality is not the authority over you. Okay, so that's what we're all aiming for, and DK has given us the way to get there. Aquarius, the sense of universality really begins to dawn. It's a, Aquarius is a prominent third-degree sign. It's also a fourth-degree sign and a fifth-degree sign. It really kicks into action on those higher levels.
The factor of synthesis enters consciousness. Uh, this sign, too, is frequently associated, as I said, with the third degree. Pisces, third degree, spiritual perception and intuitive instinct. Identification. These are developed. The monadic power of identification is initiated. Okay. So what all this means is no matter who you are or where you are, you can use these potencies in an intelligent way to take your next step forward. You've been equipped. You've been given what you need. The only thing is how to use it to really take a step. See? Now, in my schedule, which I always try to stick to, training on the seventh ray, I love it, okay? I still have a little time. Do you have any questions before we do the crucifixion? <laughs> any, you know, complaints? You heading that way? No, not me, please. I mean, you know, a little more time. Don't want to sell my uh, causal bodies the highest bidder. Yeah? Yes, it's governed by everything. Okay. Any clue about what the house is? There are clues, and I'll bet our astrologer uh, members here have better ideas than I do. I've, I've thought a lot about the fourth house and the tenth and the tenth house. You know, I have, and the Sun and Saturn and all that kind of Capricorn Cancer thing. But there's another planet missing. You know, and which initiation is it? See, maybe it's the house associated with initiation. Anyway, from my point of view, I have no firm knowledge on that. I have simply speculations, which I hope are reasonable. Does someone have an idea? Okay. <laughs> well, I know that our, you know, you can ask that to one of your astrologers, and <clears throat> they'll come up with a good answer. <clears throat> could you speak a little bit to the... Closer. Could you speak a little bit in some kind of summary way about the zodiacal meaning of transfiguration, and which one... Going beyond form. Hmm? Going beyond form, going into the archetypal form of the concrete form. Beyond form and figure in the usual sense, entering the archetypal design on which the concrete form and figure are based. And that's, you can't do that till you get to the abstract mind, ah. which is involved with, with. Thank you. Yeah. I like the enlightenment, you know, I mean, it's easier. Okay. <laughs> Have you taken a look at the, um, the zodiacal opposites in, in terms of their relationship. You, you came right straight through the signs, which has, you know, for instance, Cancer to Leo, to Virgo, you know, is uh, as relevant. But you also have, you know, Leo to Aquarius. As, Very important. Yeah. Very and important. It, but in terms of the initiations, it would be interesting to, uh, yeah. you know, and, and some of those paths may be more relevant to some initiations than others. There's the triangle. Everybody has it. Sun sign, ascending sign and the point opposite the sun sign, okay? Sun sign, personality, ascending sign, soul, point opposite your sun sign, monad. How the monad, or pure being, or the realization of pure being can function in your life if you're up to it. Now, you know, just, you know we can't all look at every chart and say, oh, well, this is my monad, and you know, if we're not even at the point where we can begin to sense what being is, then we can't really talk too much about the sign opposite the, um, uh, the sun sign in a really transcendental way. We can talk about it as an important integrative factor that has to be united with the sun sign, I think. So you're quite right. You know, we could do it these opposites and really work different paths, you know. A synthesis is required, and I'm just giving you a kind of ABC around the zodiac. Uh, we could refine it uh, uh, extensively. Um, and of course, really, look at that. Look, and I was thinking about, you know, monad. I love the monad. Why? Because I am the monad. You know, even if I'm a personality, I'm a monad. If I'm a soul, I'm a monad. Whatever I am, I'm a monad. I'm a point of pure being, which we all are. And there's only one. So that's been like, you know, for 20 years, I've just been on that, on that, on that. Why? I love it. You know, it's not exactly, DK stops short. He gives us a few hints, but he's very much wiser than I am. And he just says, look, we can't talk about this too much. But so I've made the sin of talking about it a lot. Too much, you know. 241 names for the nameless. That's my specialty. Okay. 
But, the, you know, I said, well, look, I have Libra opposite my uh, sun sign. So does it mean monad, anything, to me? And to me, it means everybody's equal, absolutely equal in spirit. And I try to see that. Everybody is the same being, you know, the same being. And that's how I work it. Now, you will all work it in a different way because there's like 12 different approaches to monadic being plus your own ray. So there's a lot of variety in there. So if you really feel that, like you're called to see all things as one, of course I have cancer rising, whole scene is one, you know, then try to figure out what gift the sign opposite your sun sign is giving you in this quest for oneness, which will lead to isolated unity at the fifth initiation. Everyone will have a different path. It's up to you to figure it out. You know, <laughs> the finger points and you can lead a horse to water and all that, but it's up to you. And that's good too, you know. Don't let any teacher get between you and the truth you already inherently realize. Okay, other questions? Anything? You ready to be crucified? I've got a couple of minutes. Doesn't take long. <laughs> I'll stop, you know, in all humility, I'll stop before mastership. Okay. We'll end with crucifixion. And if a little time uh, remains, that we can all become the five pointed star. <laughs> all right. I'll make this short. Because, frankly, some of it is uh, speculative. <coughs> this is called the Great Renunciation, the Crucifixion. Aries, the initiate breaks into the cosmic ethers. Cosmic ethers? Buddhi? Atma? Monad? Logoic. He breaks, those are the cosmic ethers. Aries is always breaking into something. I want to be interesting to do a uh, analysis of burglars. <laughs> to see, breaking and entering. Of course, they would probably come in with a whole door, you know what I mean? Others would be smarter. So, uh, it's, it's the first resurrection. The final resurrection is the seventh. Aries has a lot to do with this re resurrection there. But this is the first resurrection out of the dense physical body of the solar logos. 21 lower subplanes. Even our soul planes, lower subplanes. Aries breaks through that. Taurus, the light of the monad, because you make your first real contact with the monad at the fourth degree, DK says, uh, the light of the monad destroys all illusion in the lower worlds, even the illusion of the causal body, which we, you know, say, oh, my temple, all I've accumulated, this is wonderful. But that is a partial thing. And the light of the monad, the unfettered enlightenment of Shambhala, destroys that. The hammer blow of light. Gemini. Now, this was so interesting to me. He, he says the crisis of crucifixion is ruled by Gemini. And then he talks about all the pain on the astral plane caused by Gemini and Venus. You know, I'm still pondering. A sign deeply associated with the fourth degree, the crisis of crucifixion, man becomes two. Not just three. Two. He becomes the monad triad, and he becomes the soul-infused personality at that point. <coughs> monad triad. He's not yet totally the monad, but that's like a unit. You know, sometimes DK considers the three synthesis petals and the jewel in the lotus as a single unit. Well, here we're considering monad triad, the personality of the monad, as a single unit, and the soul-infused personality as a single unit, and Gemini is the relation between them. That's at the fourth degree. And of course, look, you know, any rending process, you're torn apart. Fourth degree, you're torn apart. You're drawn and quartered, whatever, you know? So Gemini is about the possible separation and the pain of that when you leave the lower habitual worlds, even the world of the soul. Cancer, the causal home or temple in which you are now living as a third degree initiate is destroyed in one of seven ways. Very interesting. Pick up your letters on occult meditation and you will see the seven different ways that you as a soul will destroy your causal body. Very interesting. Okay, Leo. The causal body is destroyed. The heart center 
is especially stimulated in this initiation. You know how it goes? Sacral center, first degree. Solar plexus, second degree. Adjunct center, third degree. Heart center, fourth degree. Base of the spine center, fifth degree. This is the big heart. Your heart is torn open so you can really love, and that's where it starts, without any distortion of the causal body and personality. The true ego, the spiritual triad, is now dominant. What is the true ego? He says it's the spiritual triad. Fourth degree, leave other stuff behind, enter truly the spiritual triad. Virgo, there's a lot of humility here, and you need it in this painful process. Discriminating practical self-abnegation is reached. The relinquishment, this, I love this, fourth degree, the relinquishment of all self-interest. That's a DK quote. Relinquishment of all self-interest. Virgo's good at that, you know. So is Pisces. Libra, the problem of sex is solved on a higher turn of the spiral. Ponder on this. It's not a long wait, you know, just a few lives, a few thousand years. It'll all come together in the right way. Anyway, you know, the division of the sexes occurred long ago in Lemurian times, and once Blavatsky describes, I'm sure Philip has stuff like this, it is hidden history, these great beings that were undivided, and then they divided gradually. And there, there's been trouble ever since, and now it's, uh, we're learning, well, why? Because, because we on this planet have to become what's called adjudicators between the pairs of opposites. So we have to solve the problem of polarity on this planet. Libra is perfect for that. And then things start to come together again. Male and female in certain, you know, will become divine hermaphrodites like the planet is. But that's on a in a spiritual sense. So the problem is, is, is solved. Scorpio, the entire personality is conquered. The consciousness rises onto the new plane, the true place where we as monads are expressing. We monads, we hang out on the new plane of the Scorpio Mercury. Mercury rules the little plane, Scorpio rules the little plane, and that's our true nomadic home for expression, not our home, real home on the second plane. So, so uh, there, there is this, uh, we are rising up on the little plane. That's the reward of the fourth initiation. So I the initiate, not the initiation, the initiate. Sets his sights upon the monad, which is at last revealed. The revelation of the monad at the fourth degree, not fully, but a veil is lifted. I mean, to see a monad and to be a monad are two different things. I'd much rather be than see, wouldn't you? I mean, you know, being is beyond seeing. <coughs> but seeing is the start. Capricorn. Capricorn rules five sequential initiations. The, uh, I always get this wrong. The initiate dominates the three lower worlds. That's what the master does, actually. Even the world of the higher mind. He is at last the conqueror of death. What is death? Death is subjugation to the 21 lower subplanes, which is the dense physical body of the solar logos. That's death, death of consciousness. Now we rise above that. We are the conqueror of death, for we have voluntarily relinquished the death of consciousness on the 21 lower subplanes. That's not the usual way of thinking of death. But, you know, consciousness, when it's snuffed out and you don't know what you are, that's death. And now we stand on the mountaintop, at least of the buddhic plane, in the spiritual triad, and we see that we aren't what we thought we were, which is a great revelation. Aquarius, finally, buddhic universality is achieved and synthetic perception. The cosmic ethers are now home. What are the cosmic ethers, as I said? Buddhic plane, atomic plane, monadic plane, logoic plane. The cosmic ethers are now home, for the consciousness is liberated from the causal body. You know, and the big head center is a very Aquarian thing, gets in on the act. Pisces, perfect, the great renunciation, the greatest grief, apparently, leading to the joy of freedom in the higher worlds, divine compassion, is truly felt through the wide open heart. 
You know, uh, in esoteric psychology, maybe some of you have run into the uh, nothing remains but bliss section. What time is it? <laughs> this is for my heartbeat, and this is for accurate time. Okay, what, uh, so nothing remains but bliss. It's marvelous. You know, it's the whole story of the monad. It's the story of the, gosh, what is it called? The, um, the what one? I'm forgetting something I always know. But um, anyway, it's, it's about the monad. It's about the one and all that the monad goes through. And after it's all over, it all it's, uh, nothing remains but bliss. Do you remember what it is? I can't remember. The what? The blessed one. The blessed one. <laughs> That's exactly it. Th th those, those. No, the attitudes. Okay, exactly. The um, we are the blessed one. Only we don't know it, and we then begin to know it after going through all this illusory suffering and all the rest of it. And nothing remains but what we are: the blessed one, the blessed one, whatever. And that's the end of the story. Well, for mastership, you're going to have to wait. And initiation six, seven, eight, nine, though. I will prove that they are all there. Just take it in, speed reading. There it is. It's all there. All right. Don't rush. All right. That was a quick download. I could have gotten some sleep last night. Okay. Anyway, I'll send you the document. And, uh, you know, there are things to ponder, <laughs> little things to get you going. <coughs> but the most. <coughs> <coughs> is thank you, to take the next step with the energies you have. That's what the Buddha would say, you know. He relinquished all this speculative stuff. He said, look, what really helps people? It's a practical next thing to do. Okay. DK's approach is a little different, but he's still very practical. And if you look at his picture, you see a lot of Gemini and Taurus together. Very bright, very bright part of the sky. All right, so uh, now we have, thank you so much, uh, we have a little break, and uh, uh, we have uh, announcements. Okay, go ahead. Good morning, and welcome to new ones and people who were here before. I won't say older ones. Okay. <laughs> uh, just have a, and welcome to the live stream. Thank you. I'm not on. There we go. And welcome to the live stream. So uh, we, um, everything seems to be going well. And what you need to know on live stream is we've got Brett at the back sitting there all day working it. So um, we're all bowing to Brett. My job here is to help make uh, things go a little smoother. So we will have a few announcements just so that everyone knows what's going on. The first thing and probably the most important thing is that everyone needs to have their pouch and their registration. Because in your pouch are your lunch tickets, which you need to have to have lunch. It's a way that helps us keep track of meals and so on. The uh, lunch tickets are all yellow and they all say esoteric astrology on them. You have lunch tickets in your pouch for whatever number of days you're here. If you don't have that, please go to the bookstore and register so we have that. Uh, the bookstore is open but not for payments yet. Please wait until the afternoon. You can go and put things on hold, browse. It's a beautiful, beautiful space. Things change over the week. So be prepared. Be sure to check back on those. Um, two more things. We, we've got a couple things later on. But uh, water. You're in the desert and especially getting yourself grounded. Drink way more water than you think you need uh, because you will be feeling it. And uh, astrologers, okay. So we, uh, the men, most of the astro with the astrologers who are offering readings while you are here over the next week, would you just put your hands up? Because the ones who are involved, who are ones who are involved, who are offering readings. So just get your hands up so you can see. So they're there, and there's also Jan Dietrich who could not make it today, but she uh, she is willing to do readings uh, by Skype. But most of the dates are over the weekend. So if you'd like a reading with Jan Dietrich, uh, please go into the bookstore. Make appointments with the astrologer. They'll send you to the bookstore to pay. And I think that's, um, I think that's right. If, if you're late, please, please pay attention to space. We weren't around tidying up chairs. So if we can, as a group, pay attention to, to space and tidying and chair space and so on. That saves 
us, me, Michael, um, time because we come in and straighten things up. So take your things with you and just be collectively aware of space. And I would also see having Saturn opposite my son, please be aware of time. Out of respect for people speaking, for the group process, for the live stream and so on, please be, you know, if it starts at one, please come at five, two and be prepared so you can settle in um, and sure. so we don't have the disturbance in the field. Thank you. Thank you, do. Okay, um, now, Let's, before you take your break, so it's really easy to do. Who is, uh, I hate to ask this question, considering what we've been talking about, but who is brand new to astrology, or relatively new to astrology, or thinks they would benefit by um, <clears throat> learning some of the, <clears throat> yeah, don't be afraid, because you'll go with Heidi in the group process. And Heidi is not a fearsome soul. <laughs> She is very inviting and can teach you a lot in a short time. So if you feel you're relatively new to astrology, especially the esoteric side of it, then go with Heidi in the small group, okay? Now, um, let's do this the way we always do because we still have six minutes. Um, I'm going to ask the astrologers to come up here, please. Uh, yeah, yes, right up, up, right up front. Please, will you do that? to equalize these groups, then you can go have a little break. And okay, and we'll and we'll you know divide up in different parts of the room. And probably there'll be five, six in a group or whatever. Okay. So you just um, and some and some people will be working together. You'll be uh, Francis, you'll be working with Jeff, is that it? Or with BL? With Eva. Okay. All right, <laughs> then, Francis, why don't you come and go with Eva? Okay. These are the mentors who dropped this. I did. Okay. <coughs> Just uh, some come forward a little bit. Now, what I'd like you to do, and maybe spread out a bit, uh, go, you come up now. Go with the astrologer you want to work with, and um, how do you know? They're all great, okay? But the new people, relatively new, go with Heidi, okay? Um, join your astrologer. Group around your astrologer, stagger a little bit. Then you'll know where you, I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, we'll put uh, Philip here. We'll put Heidi there. Nicholas never moves, so we'll put him here. You'll be gathered around his computer. Where's Nicholas? There he is. Okay. Um, Jeff, there. So Heidi, Philip, Jeff, uh, Eva, and Francis, there. Uh, Elena, on the other side of the table. Okay. Where, do, where is your place, Elena? Over there? Okay. Over there. I'm pointing in the vague direction here. Okay. And... Uh, did I give you a place, B.L. and Francis? Okay, is everybody right? Eva has to have a place. There, Eva. Eva, you be opposite Philip, okay? So why don't you go to those places right now? Astrologers, go to your places. Oh, oh my God. You're in the corner. Okay. Go to, go, to, go to the... No, no, don't leave. No one leaves. No one leaves. No one leaves. Your astrologer is going to go to the place where you'll be. Gather around the astrologer you want to work with. If there's too many of you, I'll have to rearrange you. You're right here. You're the king. Right in front of the Buddha. Don't block his life. <laughs> You direct me to the person to go to if this is incorrect. With right on your chart. Ah, it was right. But it might have been just typed in. It's March, not November. So this doesn't look. Correct. Oh, you know what? Is 67 correct? We had a Dan Parker that was uh, 1927, but you look a bit younger. Okay, so we're 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 going to so have just, to correct this. I wrote this. it on there. March. It's not November. It's March. Okay, March. Okay. We got to correct that. Okay, Anne. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. BL, we have some corrections. Where's BL? She went, okay. Oh boy, here we got work. Okay, good. 
Okay, is every Ole? Francis and Biel are there. Philip, Nicholas, Elena, <laughs> Kathy, Heidi, <laughs> DK. Oh, okay. B BL and but Francis is over there and he's with you. No. Oh, Eva. Okay. Is it clear and are we relatively uh, equal? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. About six or five or six or s from five to seven. Okay. BL needs another one. <laughs> what do you got? Six? Okay, well, in a smaller group, you get more attention. <laughs> Want to provide an incentive. Let's see, um, where is Tiago? Okay, you're, you're here with Philip? Okay. All right, well, that's good enough, I think. I may transport one of you somewhere. You have four? That's good. Okay. All right, just go to your astrologer and hope for the best and take 15 minutes. Come back and start. Uh, I'll put up the questions on the wall. You're free to ignore them, but they'll be there in the background, okay? All right, take a little break.